Hi, with? I'm with the Marathon County Amateur Radio. Okay, so if you go down and around the corner here, yes. you'll see all the other trucks and everything lined up. DNR is down there, Okay. and then there's a big RV from one of the other counties down there as well. Sounds so good. right around the corner, line up right along the fence then. Sounds good, thanks. Michael, KB9 VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if you'd like to see more things like that, hit that like and subscribe button. Also, check us out on Patreon. Patreons help keep the mission alive. Uh, today, we're at the NUCOM, or Northeast Wisconsin Public Safety Communications Exercise. Uh, this is a drill that happens in uh, the Northeast region of Wisconsin. About a dozen, count up to about a dozen counties participate in the NUCOM uh, exercise and uh, the type of attendees you find here are like law enforcement, fire, EMS, emergency management, and of course um, Aries races and people that are interested in emergency communications. And that's my role here today is um, Aries races as the emergency coordinator for Marathon County. Uh, we set up a little um, a station or, or a command platform to demonstrate amateur radio emergency communications to the rest of the uh, NUCOM attendees and participants. Uh, just to tell a little bit about the drill, like I said, this is um, pulling uh, communications platforms from a uh, 16 county region. Uh, a lot of mobile equipments here. Uh, in this video what we'll do is I'll kind of take you through a few of the platforms. You can see some, some of the technologies that are in use at the event. Uh, we'll also um, uh, one of the big things about uh, events like this is interoperability. Uh, so uh, we discuss some of the issues that are important in um, interoperable communications, both with uh, via the different public safety agencies and also uh, between the amateur radio community and public safety. And finally, you, you get to test your equipment, make sure everything is everything is working, and that's one of the things we'll do. We did a, we'll do an amateur radio drill, and also we'll do a, a public safety drill to make sure that um, you know we've got all of our, our, our frequencies on our public safety radios. Uh, as an emergency communicator, you know we are working with our served agencies, and our, and many times your served agencies will give you uh, permission to use the public safety their public safety frequencies on, under very uh, specific instances. And this is one of those instances. So uh, this is an opportunity for us to actually use our uh, public safety radios along with uh, the rest of the uh, emergency communications or public safety uh, officials. So uh, with that, I'll just kind of take you through the uh, NUCOM uh, public safety communications exercise. I'll let you see some of the stuff that's going on and then we'll have a little wrap up at the end. First of all, thanks for everybody showing up. The biggest thing, like Frank had mentioned earlier, is the networking of everybody here and seeing what everybody has for equipment in the event that you need to be uh, dispatched to a different county. So with our agenda, we're gonna do this briefing here, and then at 10.30, we're gonna do some platform demonstrations. What we're gonna ask you to do, the people that are actually doing the demonstrations on the platform, we're gonna have them go to their platforms and then we're gonna count off by 12s and you'll be split up into a group and you'll, you'll be monitoring mark one and you'll be told when to switch to the next platform. So one group will start on platform one and then you're there for about six, seven minutes and then you'll be told to go to platform two. DNR has uh, the primary duty for forestry, fire control in the state, so um, it's kinda cool. We do that, and uh, that's the so busy time of year, so we were happy we were right, able to make it because right. it rained a couple days. Um, we dispatch out uh, statewide through councils, and this is a this is a mobile council connected to FirstNet, so we're doing it through FirstNet right now. So um, yeah, we uh, this trailer you know is available. We can come out and help um, anyone in the state if they request us, but we primarily. Um, like to work in very rural situations. For example, we have solar repeaters, stuff like that. Um, we, Our most recent long-term deployment in the state was at the Rainbow Gathering, um, which was up in um, Bayfield River. County. Yeah. Yeah. We're part of the 54th Civil Support Team. It's a joint team here in Army. We're stationed out of Madison. Uh, this is our communications team. As you can see, it's big and blue. That's what we affectionately call it. Prime Mover is a large international. Uh, the box on the back is a custom build by uh, Nav Air Systems. It's a Navy subsidiary group out of Maryland. And we'll do just a quick 
walk around the outside and then we'll head to the inside. Now, everything we have inside is accessible from the outside. So, um, all the radios that are front mounted that you can work on the front, you can also get to the back. So if you need to change anything and do maintenance, move things around. Doug Lafredo from Wisconsin Emergency Management. I work in the communications section, and this is our uh, mobile command post, the MCC. Here on the ground in front of you, we have uh, some requestable assets, UHF radios, analog FM, 800, 700 uh, analog FM, P25, and trunking radios you can request. They come with a nice little uh, instruction manual, tell you how they're uh, laid out, exactly how they're laid out. Come out and sign out rosters. You can sign them out as needed. They work on Wiscom. They all have IDs, so and they have all the NIFOG, WIFOG, interrupt channels programmed. So everything we have has those channels at a minimum. Uh, we have some repeaters that can be requested: 800 megahertz P25 and analog UHF suitcase repeater P20, not P25, just analog. I don't have them with me, but we have VTEC 36, Mark 1, Interop, VHF repeaters, suitcase repeaters. Cool thing, we have an ACU you can request if needed. This will be a gateway from, for example, VHF to UHF, VHF to 800. We have mostly all the cables for Kenwood, Harris. Uh, we have some Yesu cables in there. We have amateur radio cables. Yep. I'm Not for the FT3, but... <laughs> We have most of the other ones. Well, that one you can you can pop out the card and program. So that's right. <laughs> uh, so these are requestable, Mike. Uh, okay. We, also, we have all the amateur radio frequencies that are used for interop. So you guys have uh, some of the stuff that the Aries Races put out. Yeah. Certain simplex channels and the WECOM. Like system. our WECOM, our WECOM channels, yep. our our um, VHF UHF simplex that's channels right. because we got the whole state mapped out. That's right. So those cha those are all in the VHF radios. They're in the UHF radios and obviously not the 800. Mm -hmm. So everything we ship out has that stuff in it. Good thing is, it's got a meeting area for about 10 to 12 people. So you can run uh, briefings in here. You can do whatever work you have to do. It's fully set up with a cradle point, which has, you can plug a dirty in it, into it. Or you can use, it has two cards in it. It's got a Verizon card and a FirstNet card in it. Okay. So it basically chooses the best one mm -hmm. and gives you data based on that. We have two repeaters in here, interop repeaters, uh, VTAC 36 and Mark 1. Come on back here. Mike, this is our radio rack. As you can see, we have VHF radios, trunking, analog, P25, UHF 800. We have a marine radio. We have an ICOM 8101 HF radio, uh, which would on the antenna up right now. We have low band VHF. And the cool thing is we also have uh, uh, two uh, ACUs, a 1000 and a 2000. You can patch these radios together. This one here has a card in it. You can run VoIP, so you can send it somewhere else. Mm. So the way we use this, for example, is if right now we're on VTAC 36, the repeater setup, let's say we wanted to go to an 800 channel. We can usually patch two radios together. We could take VTAC 36 if need be and patch it to an amateur radio channel as well. Very efficient system, works well. Platform 9. 9, the NR acknowledges. Platform 10. Platform 10. Platform 11. Platform 11 acknowledged. Platform 12. Platform 12 acknowledges. Copy all platforms acknowledged. We will now move to Mark 2. Mark 2. This is an exercise.
Watches, KB9 VB, our net control for the Newcom Amateur Radio Roll Call Simplex Net. I'll be today's net control. This drill net's part of the Northeast Wisconsin Communications Exercise held at Marathon Park in Wausau. At this time, I'll take check-ins from Newcom attendees, amateur radio operators that are part of the Newcom exercise. Please call now to KB9 VBR. KB9 VBR. Kilo Bravo 9, Charlie Bravo Lima. KB9 VBR. Kilo, Charlie 9, Yankee Lima Kilo, KC9, YLK. Okay. All right, I got checking in KB9 CBL and KC9 YLK. Thank you much. At this time, I'll now take check ins from any amateurs uh, listening, anybody in the general amateur radio community is welcome to check in. Please call now to KB9 VBR. KB9 VBR from KC9 HBX checking in. KB9 VBR and 9 MEA. Mark and Rip at least we know Mark's working. Is that HGX? HBX. BX. Thank you. All right. Okay, I got uh, KC9 HBX and N9 MEA. Uh, thank you. I'll take one more standby uh, for check ins. Please call now to KB9 VBR. Well, I hope you found that interesting, and if you have any questions about emergency communications or public safety, uh, leave them in the video comments below. We'll filter through them, and who knows, maybe it'll end up on our next Your Questions Answered live stream. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out uh, my website at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. Uh, like and subscribe, very important to us, and also check us out on Patreon. Pa Patreons help, patrons help keep that mission alive. And with that, uh, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9 VBR. Have a great day and 73.